Hey everyone, Nathan Nardark here from Nardarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and today we're going to be talking about custom classes and porting over uh, a class from a previous edition. And that's this uh, suggestion from one of our our viewers. Which one? Alfred Lanning. Alfred Lanning. So uh, this kind of falls into my realm of stuff, but first let's go. I'm Ted. Dave. And uh, pretty much, well, I'm going to talk about Sonics. Like, so I, every opportunity I do, I talk about Sonics. And it just happens uh. to be that it's a custom class that I worked on. And it's also a class from another edition that I kind of ported over. Uh, it doesn't look anything like second edition in the sense of, you know, it's not like it has the same abilities. So, and so stuff. Port, either creating a new custom class or porting an old one over, what do you think important thing? Uh, to get the feel of the, of the class. And kind of what the class is meant to do, not necessarily like uh, what's well, supposed to shoot fire or whatever, but the idea that you're supposed to have a certain feel to the character class, and uh, how does that translate into the current edition? So, uh, fighter, for example, has a specific way that they've done fighter in all the editions. And you can kind of say, well, how much have they changed fighter from second to now, and or third to now? And kind of look at that same change if you're going to make yeah, a fighter so, type class. So it, basically, you have to take the archetype of that particular um, thing, right? Not necessarily archetype in the sense of you know we pick archetypes in fifth edition, mm -hmm. but archetype in what is what is the paragon? What is, what is of the that? quintessential of of this? Yeah, you know we, we've talked about in uh, other videos and, and off camera about. Um, the, the artificer and other things and that when you make a class, regardless of what it is, first level you want to feel like you are that. Yeah, you know, like you're, you're playing if, that class. If you're playing a rogue at first level, you want to feel like a rogue. You know, regardless of what skill selection you take, you, you can be a rogue and not take stealth or sleight of hand and still do roguey things. Yeah. Um, you know, so when you make a psionicist or however you classify all of your different options, you want to feel like, well, I'm this. You didn't want to just, well, let me tack this on to fighter, or tack this on to monk. Yeah. Because at first level fighter, you don't get to choose an archetype, so you're so not a psionic yeah, character. Yeah, that's, that's not a psychic warrior if you can't if you can't be it at first level. Yes, do any psychicking. Yeah, psychic so, raking. Yeah. So that that's that's why you went down the path of making all new classes so so yeah, okay so based off of classes that already exist that's another important thing is you want to pick a class the closest thing to it or two classes and kind of get a good mesh of the two or kind of say i well i can it's kind of like this other one but it's the most like this so for example I'm, uh, sorcerer is the most like the base of what i would say a sonic, sonic is except that sorcerers have extra points for their meta magic and psionicists would have the spell pool. So I kind of made that trade of they lose you know, a total of 20 points, but they gain that ability of the spell pool, which is in the DMG, page 222, if you want to check it out. And um, so that I went with Sorcerer as the base, and then I just built from there. Because Sorcerer is a Sorcerer from the first level. And the same thing with Psionics. I could make it feel like a Psionicist from the first level. I, I feel like you know, someone who's trying to you know, recreate a class from a previous edition... I feel like one of the things that's going to hang them up is is mechanics. Is feeling like they need to do a certain kind of mechanic. Mm, where, like when maybe, what ability they had. Or? Yeah, yeah. When maybe it's just not supported in the current edition or game you're playing. You know, so, so you have to come up with that core of what this thing is, that feel, and then go, well, what is that, what is that like? What is the closest, like you said? And, and, you know, what is, you know, mechanically fair? Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, first off, look at what look at what you're trying to create. See if you can make that with a current class or class combinations. And if you can't fill that criteria, you know, then, then go ahead and, and go the custom route. Yeah, can it, be and, a, can it be an archetype is an important question. Can it be an yeah, archetype of you know, one of the classes that's already so, there? So, yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's a great addendum. Um, you know, and if it can't, if you can't make it with an archetype or a combination of classes, you know, then you can say, all right, well, let's go ahead and, and make my own. And you can either compare it to a class that exists and try to mirror abilities or try to make sure that whatever you're doing is balanced within, within the state of, of the edition. Yeah. Um, you, you want to, whenever you're playtesting stuff, you always want to 
underpower things because if you ever play a character or you know r race class whatever and everyone says man that's fantastic i want to play that and yeah, everyone probably the table, broke something <laughs> you, yeah you probably come up with something that's like this is this is more powerful than everything else why would i not play that so you want to avoid that trap as well so it's better to go underpowered and if you feel you add know, stuff you, you know you can always add stuff if it's if it's severely underpowered you know, rather than having to take stuff away and deal with a you know an upset player or upset DM, whatever. Yeah, and then, you know, the other thing too is you can kind of um, pull apart certain aspects of the classes in order to kind of use it as a basis. Like you know, if it's a wipe, it's going to have a big hit die. You know, die mm -hmm. ten or above. Uh, you know, if it's a heavy, heavy spellcaster, you're going to have the lower hit die. So you're going to go with a D six. You're going to have a die six. And then you have, you know, like the middle ground. You know, if you, if it's a class that has, is dependent on a lot of abilities, it's probably going to be a die eight and have, you know, the, that diverse, diversity. Yeah, we don't we don't have to dip into the, you know, the spellcasters of old with that whole, that old D4 hit die. Well, yeah, thankfully the D4 hit die is dead. <laughs> uh, but, you know, no. so, so that being said, it, you know, it's it's going to be a lot of art, uh, art mixed with science, I feel like, for... Uh, you know, coming up and porting over or creating from scratch. I, I, I kind of feel like, you know, with the classes we're given in the PHB, most things are covered. Yeah. I would say the number one thing to avoid is saying, oh, this class is too unique. I should just make it from scratch. That's the hardest thing to balance. And everybody else is going to be looking at it. And unless you've got, like, your giant book of explanation goes in certain things, it's just harder to explain then. Everyone's oh, going to be breaking your balls because you're like, yeah. you gave them two good saving throws. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, like, I didn't know about the saving throw rule until Dave said something about it. And then I was like, well, I'm kind of attached to the saving throws they had. But then I saw that it was really a balance issue. Everybody's got an awesome save in 5th edition, and everyone has a junkie save in 5th edition. And no matter how thematic it would be to have con and and wisdom as a say, <laughs> which it was totally thematic and totally fit. It just wasn't gonna. It was gonna mess up the rest of the game because everyone's gonna be like, "Well, they've got these saving throws, which is completely off from everybody else's." Well, like the the monk, the monk should have Dex and wisdom. Oh hell yeah, it should. But but it breaks the format of fifth edition where you get one from con Dex or wisdom, and you get one from strength, and intelligence, th or crazy. I guess well, they and, thought and, that was so ridiculously awesome that. Though Monk is really ridiculous, it's awesome. They couldn't have actually had that little elevation. You, well, you power. do know actually gets all saves as good saves. Oh yes, just <laughs> same thing with the Paladin, and they get their bonus to charisma with all their saves, right? Still, no, Paladin doesn't get all good saves. They, they just they just get the bonus. They just get the bonus. Yeah. They just get the bonus. They charisma bonus to everything, which yeah. is kind of like having the save. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. But so, that, isn't that an aura? Is that an aura that they get? Or yeah, yeah. So eventually they give it to everybody. It's different. Oh, all right. Yeah, different. So uh, another thing is the Psycho Warrior Paladin. I went with Paladin. Which, when I changed it over to Sega Warrior, I actually toned it down a bit, and it still seems overpowered. But I haven't really given it much. So, I think S S Paladin's just overpowered in this game. <laughs> That's my conclusion. Because I didn't, like, give it superpowers over top of what the Paladin gets. Really. Much. It was just a swap out. I, it was a swap out for most things. I actually took away... What, they don't get auras. They get psionic, feet, psionic feats instead. Uh -huh. They're not that awesome. To, to cancel out how good auras are, but maybe maybe it's a good swap. Maybe I need to space them out to give that feel of they're not they're not just different types of paladins. Well, our so, auras aren't really awesome until like 18th level or 15th yeah, level. Yeah, so I mean there's so they're kind of spread out goodness rather than the the aura yeah. back. Like the aura sounds really cool until you realize you're a wizard and you have to be standing next to the paladin who's in melee combat. Yeah, you don't really want to be there. <laughs> it's probably not worth the save bonus. Yeah, so there there is it's there is restrictive to that. So I'm thinking about uh spacing out the sonic feats to to go with even though they're lost of aura, it's just still kind of situational, I guess. It's not situational mm -hmm. enough to uh to be equivalent. So there's a few things to get augmented in that sense. And um, for Sonic, uh, for the Sorcerer, it's really easy because I just said, okay, well, sorcerer, Sorceress Origin, these are the powers that are available. Well, what's a similar power that I could give a Sonic guy that doesn't really like go over the top? So one of them got Flesh Armor, which is very similar to the Draconic thing, except rather than 
it's your uh, con modifier. So rather than having a flat AC 13 plus mm -hmm. your dex, you're getting your con plus your dex. Well, that sounds awesome until you actually make one of those characters and you're like, oh, my dex is actually not, I mean, my armor class is actually not that good. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's in line. Because I'm not a con, I'm not a, I'm not a barbarian. Yeah, well, my, it's, you know. it's still, it's in line with unarmored defense from yeah, the other right. classes. Yeah, and I think, I think it's good. I still like it, but it wasn't, it, I was worried it was going to be too good. And it's yeah. really only good when you throw two twenties in there, or like two sixteen or eighteens. Right. And you're not going to have two sixteens and say, "Yep, wisdom and con. Everything else can go to the crapper." You know, I'm just going to take wisdom and con. So uh, from that perspective, I mean, wisdom. Well, wait, it's dex. The problem is that it's dex and con that you need to have that good armor class, and you also need wisdom for your powers. Right. So you actually work out with like overall three stats that are kind of good, rather than you know, your primary stat. It's the monk awesome. problem. The monk, yeah. you need three good stats. Yeah, the, probably, yeah, the monk problem. You need three good stats. And the same three good stats. So I was worried about that ability at first, but now I'm kind of okay with it because I made a character in it and I play tested it and I said, well, it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. So it's still good, still thematic, but not like a game-breaking problem. Right, it's something you can definitely grow into. Yeah, so, you know, I took out the, like I said, I swapped out. They still have meta magic abilities, but they don't get that extra boost of points to spend on the meta magic they got to grab it from their pool instead nice. so that's a lessening of power and it's also kind of like a hedge against um saying well i'm going from slots to pools because mm -hmm. the pool is more advantageous versatility wise so i wanted there to be some kind of negative for gaining that pool and still having the meta magic abilities and i felt that sonics really work well with the meta magic abilities so i didn't want to take the meta magic away from them so I kept it in with the Sorceress class. So I guess Sionix, you could really just say, is another Sorceress origin mm. uh, rather than in a completely different class. But it just happens to be that I've like Sorcerer Origins by adding five. <laughs> so, so now it's like seven Sorceress Origins instead of just the two. So, I mean, come on. That's like three times the work Watts did for Sorcerers. So... <laughs> <laughs> So why don't you put your comments down below about what you think about creating custom classes or your success or failure if you've actually gone ahead and, and made any uh, custom classes. While you're doing that, feel free to click like, share, even subscribe. Check us out at nerdarchy.com. No, so join us on Facebook. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.